If you already watching my videos from this channel you may have seen me using a lot of images to create my artworks. Today I want to challenge myself to bring a famous painting to life using different stock images and I will also try to keep my personal style. Will I succeed? Let's find out together! To create a background I used different parts from different images. And because those parts were selected from different photos with different lights and different colors, I started to fix those things. So first thing, I darken up the far area using uh, levels. Then the next mountain, I did the same thing using levels, I darken it up. Then to create some atmosphere I started to add some mist, some fog between the mountains. And here in the foreground I have added some uh, grass that will help my design to look more realistic. Then for the wolf part because I searched like a few days for wolf pictures in uh, this position and I couldn't find. I had to mix two pictures to reach something like uh, this wolf. So I selected the wolf from this one. I flipped the wolf horizontally. I selected the wolf from the other picture. I tried to match the position that I wanted with those two pictures. I selected what I needed and then I hide the other parts. Then I made this this one bigger and I try to match the perspective of my wolf and then with the hue and saturation I um, tried to mix their colors so they look the same. So I place my wolf behind the rocks, added a shadow underneath his legs using a layer set to multiply and then using uh, levels, a few levels adjustment layers, I darken up uh, some parts of the wolf and with a color balance I have modified the midtones to match the wolf with the rest of the background and because here there are some magic runes that are holding uh, captive the wolf I try to do something similar but with uh, some magic glow instead of those ropes so I found this picture and I uh, selected uh, this rock use it here another one here another rock here so now what I have to do is to match their colors and lights with the rest of the design. And now I need to match their colors and shadows and lights with the rest of my artwork. So basically it's the same process. I make them really dark using levels. And here for the right side I use an exposure where I have added a bit of light from the right side. Of course I have painted a shadow using a layer set to multiply. And I repeated the process for the other rocks. I don't know if this one is a mage or something that it's holding captive the wolf. But I wanted to evolve that story. And I created a few mages that are holding the wolf captive. So I selected uh, this woman from this picture. Place her here in front. And for this one I used two pictures. Both pictures that I have used are from Feastock from Deviant Art. She has an amazing gallery. So I selected the top area, so I selected the bottom area. And then I just placed one on top of the other. And of course, I needed to fix the light shadows and so on. For this mage, I wanted her to read from a book, and I was lucky enough to find this uh, book on Unsplash and place that book in front of her like she is reading or casting a spell from it. I made it darker using levels and here I felt like uh, this is not complete without the fire so I have placed a fire and I found this amazing picture on Unsplash. I selected a part of it, use it here and uh, of course make it darker and added some smoke and now it looks like uh, they have a fire over there. And now is the time for magic. 
if you don't know already uh, I have used uh, this uh, magic glow in a lot of videos but for the sake of this video let's do it again so I create a new group let's call it magic glow and I set this group to screen inside this group let's create a new layer I'm going to take the paint bucket tool the black color and I'm going to fill it with black of course it's not visible because my group is set to screen if it will be normal it will be black then I'm going to create a new empty layer which will be the layer where I'm going to draw the magic let's call this one magic and then the third one and the most important is the gradient map so select the gradient map and here the left color should be black and the right color should be white and then if you decide to go let's say with the uh, reddish glow the left color which will be around 25% should be a red dark red color something like that or more orangey color and then at a 50% here we should have a brighter color uh, something like an orangey color something like that and then it should be something like a yellowish color something like that and then hit ok go back to that empty layer and now is the time for magic so let's take the brush tool the soft round brush and select a really low flow let's take the brush and don't forget you need to have the white color selected and if i paint with the white color you see it will paint a really cool magic glow I learned this method from Max Asabin and I must say that I have used it a lot in my artworks. In this case I drew some lines so those lines are like uh, holding my wolf captive so I just drew one on top of the other and then if I didn't like some parts I switched to the eraser tool and I have erased some parts of uh, this glow and then I just uh, started to paint more and use the eraser tool and I have erased some parts and so on and if you want to make this glow even more interesting switch to the smudge tool and uh, just use the smudge tool and play around and you'll see it will add some really really cool shapes to that uh, magic in some of my videos I have uh, showed you this brush which is amazing and I have used this one and just paint it with the white color so I just took uh, one of the brushes from these arcane circles and I have just used the white color and 100% flow I have pressed once with the mouse and it created this amazing glow I press ctrl T and by holding ctrl I move the corners to create a perspective for that book and then I have created some glows using linear dodge and color dodge on my mages if you don't know how to do that please don't forget to watch my highlights and rim lights video it's a really amazing video if you want to learn this type of uh, glow it's really easy and you can learn it really really fast and i wanted a rune on top of the wolf's head and i have used the same uh, really cool uh, brushes but this time I have used a different glow, a bluish glow instead of uh, that uh, reddish glow. The settings here for this gradient map are these ones. Then I created a screenshot by using Ctrl Alt Shift and I, right click, convert it to a smart object to apply the camera row filter. Those are the settings that I have used in the camera row filter. You can use mine or use your own settings if you want different colors. This is my result. Of course, I really didn't want to make just uh, a perfect copy. I don't think I could have, even if I would have spent more time with it. But I think I managed to make it look in the same idea. And of course, I kept my own style with the glows and the magic. Let me know what you think about this type of videos. If you want to see more of uh, recreating uh, famous paintings. And I'm really curious to see... Uh, what you think in the comments down below if you found this video useful don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you are a big fan of glows highlights and uh, rim lights and all those shiny things don't forget to watch this video next i'm mr 23 see you next time